we had a fantastic time tonight, but we didn't want to stop here because we wanted to give you just one more thing. And one of the things that I'd like to say about AMDers is we are incredibly ambitious about what we can do with technology. And it's really the power of our portfolio that allows us to do something that can't be done today. And so I really challenge the team to say, hey, what can we do that would be really, really special and incredibly ambitious? And so we really wanted to see where we could take our products. What's the next big performance lever that we could put in? And we decided that the right point was a petaflop of performance. Petaflop, what, how does that sound? So, look, let me just give you a little bit of perspective on the computing horsepower for a petaflop. It's actually one quadrillion operations per second if you're doing a petaflop of computing. And truly, you mostly talk about petaflops in the context of supercomputers and things like mapping the human genome or predicting weather patterns or doing something you know, simulating something extremely complex. That's what people say when they talk about petaflop computers. And to give you just a little bit of history for those of you who followed AMD, in 2008, we worked really closely with IBM to build the Roadrunner supercomputer that combined 6,500 dual-core AMD Opteron CPUs and 13,000 accelerators to become the first supercomputer to break that petaflop barrier. And at the time, it was actually the highest performing computer in the world. Now, we actually originally launched Opteron in 2003. So it took us five years to get to a petaflop with technology at that time. Now, a lot has really happened since then. And frankly, we've made a lot of advances in technology. And so I asked the team to figure out what will it take for us to get to a petaflop today. And this time, using our Epic CPUs and our Radeon Instinct GPUs. So, what's so different today? If you really think about it, you know, Epic and Radeon Instinct are great products by themselves. But what we actually did over the last several years is architect this system together. Architect the Epic CPUs plus the Radeon Instinct GPUs with the idea that we could put together an extremely flexible and extremely compact and very, very energy efficient platform that integrates CPUs, GPUs, memory, and I.O. in the most efficient manner possible. And this type of computing system is really designed for GPU intensive workloads. So whether you're talking about machine learning, deep learning, AI applications, or some of these rendering these incredible data sets. Our engineers work very, very closely with a couple of partners, including Inventec, Mellanox, and Samsung, to put together a system that could really demonstrate a petaflop of performance. So, you will be absolutely amazed at what we have been able to do in just a few short months since we announced these products. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I am incredibly excited to show you for the very first time a petaflop computer with Epic and Radeon Instinct together, the Inventec P47.
just slightly. But in this single rack, what we have is 20 AMD Epic CPUs, 80 Radeon Instinct GPUs, and over 10 terabytes of DDR4 memory. And ladies and gentlemen, this guy delivers one petaflop of single precision computing. And if you really think about that, it's an incredible amount of horsepower in this beautiful form factor. Servers are beautiful? Yes. I think what makes this system so special is really the efficiency that comes from the ability to connect every Epic CPU directly to four Radeon Vega GPUs without the need for a lot of additional switching components and other things that really um, that really allow this form factor. Now, I am incredibly proud of the team that put this together. Frankly, it's only been a couple of months since we have um, really started this project. But we wanted to show you what a petaflop computer can do. So this is the actual form factor, but it turns out, uh, believe it or not, this theater doesn't do so well for the amount of power and uh, cooling capabilities that you need for um, something like this. So we actually have our working server that's back at our headquarters in Silicon Valley, and we're going to access that live here through the cloud. So to see that, let me bring Raja back to finish up the show with just a few more demos with our P45 system. Raja? <laughs> We'll do that after uh, the party. Whoever wants to join me in hugging the server rack. This is a beautiful rack. Um, you know, like this 20 years of crazy journey in uh, computer graphics, there's one thing that keeps giving adrenaline rush. That is doing crazy live demos of pieces of hardware that's only, <laughs> you know, being powered on days ago. This machine that we're going to show you was, I swear to you, was powered on three days ago, okay? And, and we'll show you some cool stuff. But first, to show you that it is real, we have, uh, let's switch to the Skype, we have a Skype session going on with the lab. We have the Skype window on the interviews. <laughs> okay, um, so we have put together uh, a couple of wonderful things. The first one, is uh, uh, what I call a virtualized studio, an entire studio virtualized on this uh, petaflop rack. So some of you may uh, be familiar with this concept of virtualization, where you can take your entire workstation experience, right, your entire workstation experience, end-to-end -end workstation experience, and put it on a server, and have a remote access, and have all your tools, all your data, everything sitting on the server, and be accessible anywhere and everywhere. So uh, we have four, uh, you know, I'd call it thin clients, portable clients that are put here. The first one is a Dell notebook, okay? Can we show the Dell notebook? Okay, it's running Maya on the petaflop rack. And let's, uh, the second machine we have is a thin client from HP, okay? And it's running Blender on the Sunnyvale rack. And the third machine we have is a MacBook Air. Okay, MacBook Air is running uh, which application? New. Okay, and then we have an iPad here running uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. The full applications. These are not, you know, apps. These are the full suite of applications in there. And in fact, Omar will show you that you can actually interact with these things. You know, that uh, are you playing the Adobe Premiere Pro? Yes. Yeah, so you can interact the full production flow. Now, what is significant about this demo that we're showing here on this rack? Each GPU can support up to 16 users. This rack with 80 GPUs can support 1,280 Vega sessions, 1,280 simultaneous users can be supported on this, on this rack. So that is like taking a medium-sized studio Right, your entire set of workstations, stations and put it in the cloud, protect your data, and enable all your artists, all your designers to work from anywhere, anywhere they are, 
without compromising your data security and all. That's the virtualization demo. We are the only company, our GPUs are the only GPUs that have fully accelerated hardware virtualization. Fully secure, full hardware-based context switching so that you have smooth performance, guaranteed performance. So that's demo one, okay? And uh, if you are a studio, if you are a member of a studio, if you are an executive of a studio, you've got to really take a look at this thing. The next demo I have, I think this is, this is probably a, a record uh, in there. We are going to do, use all of the 80 GPUs. So what you saw in the previous demo was basically, you know, time slicing the GPUs for many tasks. So what if we want to use all of the 80 GPUs, the whole petaflop uh, for one task? Your favorite task, which is rendering. Can we render, right, a photorealistic image if you use all of the GPUs simultaneously? And this morning, the team was able to launch a, a full photorealistic render on this 80 Vega GPUs. So Omar, show us uh, what the 80 GPUs are doing. So they are rendering this beautiful photorealistic looking motorcycle on the, on the GPU. So as he's updating, all of the data, right, from each node is coming across network back to it. So the update delay that you see is all network delay. Now, those of you in the rendering community know how long it takes for you to get a frame of this quality render back from a server, right? How, how long does it take? Too Minutes, long. seconds, hours, too long. <laughs> yes, that's the right answer. And we are able to update this thing. So this is the world's first petaflop render that you saw live from the Sunnyvale studio. Anything else you want to show? Okay. So that, you know, thank you, Mark. So, you know, we are redefining high-performance computing. We are redefining high-performance computing for the content creation community. It's amazing amount of products, amazing amount of technologies, amazing, am amazing amount of solutions, partnerships that we have showcased uh, tonight. And uh, to take us to the most important party, most important part of the night, which is the party. <laughs> You know, I, I, I've been longing to drink <laughs> for a long, long time. So, Roy Taylor will be back on stage and uh, tell us what we are supposed to do for the next um, several hours. Okay? Okay, thank you all. Please welcome Roy.